Hey everyone, in this video I want to explore how I can have secrets in my PowerShell scripts and use them no matter where those secrets are actually being stored and what that actual implementation is. Maybe it's sync on the file system, maybe it's Azure Key Vault, maybe I'm using Credential Manager or HashiCorp Vault or LastPass, whatever it is, I don't want to have to know about that within my script. I want to be able to write a script and then whatever the user of that script choose to use for the implementation of actually storing the secrets, it doesn't matter. I don't have to change my script at all. And we can do this with the brand new secrets management module. As always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated. And please hit that bell to be notified when I release new videos. So the challenge is this. I write my PowerShell script. So I have my great PowerShell script and somewhere within there, I need a secret. Now, maybe that secret is something I just want to read in from wherever it is. Maybe I want to write it, whatever that might be. I want to interact with some secret. Now, where possible, we're trying to avoid secrets completely. If this was running in Azure, for example, I could use something like managed identity, so it automatically has an authentication authorization, and I can use role-based access control and resources. But let's say I do need a secret. Now, there's many different ways we can think about actually having secrets. I could have something ultimately, for example, on a file system. I could absolutely use things like, well, it's cloud-based. So I could think about, I have solutions like Azure Key Vault. We have things locally on our machine using things like Credential Manager. And as I kind of talked about, there are many, many kind of others as well. HashiCorp Vault, uh, LastPass, there's a huge number of these. But to work with those, they would all work in different ways. So my code would be different. And we really want to avoid that. So what we're actually going to leverage is there's this new module. And what this module actually is, it's secret management. So we have this brand new Microsoft provided secret management module. And what the whole point of this thing is, it's completely going to abstract what the actual implementation is of the secrets. I don't care from my script. This is going to expose a number of commands. Commands that let me, for example, um, write secrets, get secrets, modify the secrets. So I'm going to have these standard commands for kind of set, get, etc. And it's going to be the same command no matter how that's actually stored. And that's kind of the key point. So if I jump over for a second actually to PowerShell, so the first thing is you install the module. Now the module I actually have to have is this secret management module. So we have this command here to install module microsoft.powershell.secretmanagement. Now I'm also installing the microsoft.powershell.secret store. So this is optional. But this is going to give me a store on the local file system that I could leverage to store my secrets. And completely optionally, but for me, I like to install it with a scope of all users. Now, I've run that from an elevated command that's already installed. Now, I can go and look at, well, what are the commands actually for secret management? And we can see it's very basic, but we find we have commands. Well, look, I can set a secret. We have that. I'm going to zoom in. I can also, if I scroll up, there we go, I can do things like, well, I can get secrets. I can also, well, what are my secret vaults that are available? And I can register secret vaults. And there are things like remove secrets. There are other things I can do, but it's really these generic set of commands that I can use. Now, additionally, I have added kind of the secret store. There's really not much you do with this. But you can see, hey, there's some secret store configuration. Um, that, that's really about it. I can unlock, I can change its password. 
Now, if I just go and look, initially, I've done a fresh installation on this machine, I have no volts actually registered. So the first thing we have to do is actually register the volt. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually register the secret store provider, that module, to add that to my secret management configuration. I'm gonna set it as the default volt. So I've done that. Now if I do a get, we can now see I have that configured. So what I've actually done at this point is if I think about from that file system, well, I have various kind of providers. So what I've done here is, well, I've added this secret store provider, which actually writes things to the file system. So that is essentially now registered with my secrets management. So that's what we're doing in all of these configurations. So let's go back. So what I want to do now is I, I've kind of done that registration. Let's actually just create a secret. So I'm just gonna do a set secret. I'm gonna call it password one and then I give it a value. Now the first time we use the secret store, it's gonna make us set a password. This is the password to unlock that secret store vault on the file system. So you can see here, okay, it's gone and created it. So this password is only once because I'm basically initializing that local file system based secret store. So this is the password to unlock that vault. So I would set that, make sure I don't forget that. And I have to type it again. And I've now configured that. So if we think about our configuration, the kind of the connection, the unlock of that is a password. So something in my configuration, I'm going to use that to unlock. Now in automation, there are things I can do so I don't get prompted. Uh, I can actually pass it as a secure credential. Now obviously there's a bit of a chicken and egg problem here. Um, where do I store this? So if I'm taking this approach, I'm probably going to unlock that before the automation or work out some other way to pass it, which is why some of these other ones might be more attractive. And I can actually set it to not require a password. So there is that option. That's probably not a security best practice. By default, it wants a password. So if we go back again and continue this, so you can see, okay, so I have created that secret. If again, I look at my secret store configuration, this is what I'm talking about. So that's the secret store specific configuration. And you can see my interaction is gonna prompt me to enter the password. It is set to require that password. And there is a timeout of 900. And you, you can change these. Notice if I wanted to, I could have it as a secure string and I could unlock it and pass that. I could also set the authentication to none. So I don't require a password to unlock, it's just unlocked. Uh, again, security best practice is probably not gonna go that way. Now what this module was actually doing is storing it in the local file system. So if I was to go and look at my local app data, Microsoft PowerShell Secret Management, we'll see two folders. So local store is the secret store where it has that actual encrypted data. It's using the .NET um, cryptography APIs, that's what it's actually using for the encryption. The secret vault registry, this other folder, that just contains a JSON file of the actual vaults you have registered. So that's really all that is doing. Now if we carry this on, we wrote a secret, can I get it? Hey, I'll just run the get secret, there it is. Now, obviously, I could save that to a variable. I could say, hey, I need this. And I could say, hey, my password is whatever that is to write it into a variable. I can modify it. So I can very easily modify it. And what I might do here, just to have a little bit of fun, if I go and look, for example, at my subscriptions over here, I'm going to copy my subscription ID, just for a little giggle. And what I'm gonna do is paste that in here and execute that line. And then I'll 
we set that to the default. So now what I have that is that is set as a secret. If I kind of just do a get secret and I would enter that particular name, um, the other thing I can actually do as well, just cancel out of that for a second, is I can actually just do a get secret info. So if I just run get secret info, it will show me all of the secrets that are currently known across whatever vaults are registered right now. And in this case, I'm going to go and get that subscription ID I just set, and I'm going to store it in a variable. So now my subscription ID is stored in that variable. So if we looked at that quickly, there it is. So I could use that later on. Now a secret doesn't have to just be a regular single string. I can, for example, use a hash table. So here, I'm going to set a secret named password2 to be this hash table of username1 equals a password, username2 is a, a different password. I can absolutely do that. I could then fetch it into a variable. And here I could look at, well, what's the, the hash entry username1? And there's its password. Now, additionally, metadata can be configured. Now, a key point here is, when I talk about these providers, I'm going to talk about some other ones. There's certain features they have to implement. Um, setting the secrets, getting a secret. Then there are optional configurations. An optional configuration is something like a metadata. The secret store, they have supported metadata. Today, for example, Key Vault does not. So you'd have to check with the actual provider on exactly, well, do they support some of the optional features like metadata? But if it does, I can go and configure this as well. So if we jump back over to here, what I'm going to do now is actually on that secret, remember I don't have to say a vault because this is my default vault, I'm going to set some metadata on it. So here I'm just setting, hey, the metadata to be environment is dev. And now when I get secret info, I could look at the name and the metadata, and hey, uh, I can see that information is available to me. This is great. I'm looking at this local file system based through the secret store module. Now I wanted to use Key Vault. Providing I actually have the Azure Key Vault module installed, it's so now we're actually dealing with here the Azure Key Vault. Now what does this use? So this is going to use whatever my current context is. I've already done, for example, a Connect AZ account. Now, that could be I'm a resource in Azure, I'm using managed identity, that would still work. But whatever my current context is, that's what it's going to use for the Key Vault connection. And then whatever permissions that context has, it's going to use role-based access control to deem what I have access to. And once again, we can register this to secret management. And the only things I really have to do here is tell it the subscription ID and the key vault name. So I'm going to go ahead and actually add a key vault. Now first, I actually have to go and look at the key vault. So I have a key vault over here. All I need at this point is its name. So I'm going to copy the title. And then if I jump over, I'm going to put in here, basically I'm passing it this, this hash table of the key vault name, it needs these two things. So I'm going to create this as the parameters. So I've got my Savile Vault RBAC name. And then my subscription ID, remember I, I just got that actually from my local secret store. So I've got my key vault parameters. And now I'm going to register a new vault. I'm using the az.keyvault module. And I'm going to name it key vault store. And I'm passing it the vault parameters to tell it the key vault name and the subscription. I've now registered then another vault. And I can do get secret info from that particular vault. Now it's using my default context. And notice I already have secrets because this particular key vault has secrets that I have permissions to. So there's secret one and secret two. And I also have a certificate which is what that's showing there as well. 
I can now treat it exactly the same way though. I don't have to do anything different. For example here, secret one, get that secret. As plain text, no different than if I was getting it from that local secret store. So here, I run that, there we go. That actually went and got it from Azure Key Vault and I could set secrets. So the whole point here, I am doing nothing different. My script just uses these generic commands that completely abstract away whatever the underlying implementation is of the secrets. The person using my script can make a choice. Hey, I'm gonna use Azure Key Vault, I'm gonna use the secret store, I'm gonna use Credential Manager, I'm gonna use HashiCorp Vault. It doesn't matter at all. The script is completely abstracted through this secret management module. And we can take it one step further. So if we kind of carry on the demo, I'm also going to go ahead and register the credential manager. So I've already run this installation. So this is another module. And this time I'm gonna register using that module, the secret management credman, and gonna call it credman store. So I'm registering that. And what I'm now gonna do is just, again, set a secret, targeting the credman store. And I've now created a secret. Likewise, I can go and get it. No difference. If I fire up Credential Manager, and we look at our Windows credentials, we should see a PS dot, there it is. It has gone ahead and created that within Credential Manager, that's how it's storing it. So that is obviously using my default user context for that. But it's completely abstracted away for me. Now we have that Credman module. So this is obviously Credman, and it's someone specific actually wrote this, but this is using my current user, who I've authenticated with on that machine, and that's only going to be Windows. So now I've registered that as well. So the key point is this is cross-platform. So this works on really anything that the PowerShell core works, PowerShell 7. So Windows, Linux, Mac OS. This works. These work. This, this is Windows specific. So I should kind of point out Windows only. Just for that one. And again, there are many, many others. What we can actually do is we can go and look at the PowerShell gallery and we can look for the tag of secret management. And if we look for that tag and I've got kind of the pre-created search here, well then there's the PowerShell secret management, the PowerShell secret store. There's one for key pass, last pass. Here is that Credman one I just demonstrated. Bitwarden HashiCorp Vault. One password, keychain, chromium, pleasant password, server, keybase, cyber arc. A whole number of these. So you pick which ones you actually want. And again, they get to pick what functionality. So there's that core set of functionality. Then there are optional things such as that actual metadata, etc. I think that's really the, the cool point. I mean, the final thing I can do is now I've got three different vaults registered. I could quickly look across all of them. So I can see, look, I have secrets in my secret store. I have secrets also in my Credman and I have some from Key Vault. But my script does not care. It does nothing different. It's using those standard set of commands that get secret, set secret, that's all it has to do. And then depending on what I've done on that particular environment, controls where those actually are, but it completely abstracts it away. And that's the whole point of this. It really just simplifies how I interact, gives me choice without having to actually change my code. Um, all the sample commands I have here uh, in my random stuff GitHub, which I've linked to in the description. I hope this was useful. You saw how simple this was. This was me setting it up actually during the demo. It all just worked, which when I was practicing this, it all just worked. It's phenomenally simple, but really, really powerful. So with that, take care and I'll see you in another video soon.